They say that love is blind, which is a beautiful sentiment. Unfortunately, blind love can sometimes make you miss what would otherwise be obvious red flags. On today's case, Ms. Johnson says she was so smitten with Mr. Hardaway that by the time she figured out he was an irresponsible cheating man-child with a gambling problem, she was in way too deep. She says she's been putting up with his antics for the last four years and has lost jobs, money, and even a home for her troubles. Ms. Johnson says she is sick and tired of being burned by Mr. Hardaway, and she says she's finally opened her eyes. She states that if Mr. Hardaway doesn't see the light and get his act together, she will be taking their daughter and moving on. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Johnson versus Hardaway. Thank you very much. Ms. Johnson, Mr. Hardaway. Ms. Johnson, you are here in court today because you want to marry a man, not a boy. You say Mr. Hardaway is a lying, cheating gambler who has embarrassed you for the last time. You say you cannot depend on Mr. Hardaway and he constantly disrespects your relationship. You've had enough. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Hardaway, you're here today to save your relationship. You say your main goal is to have your daughter grow up in a two-parent household. You desperately want to show Ms. Johnson that you are taking this relationship seriously and will no longer take her for granted. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I see that you've been together for four years, you've lived together for three of those years, and you do indeed have a two-year-old daughter. So there are some stakes in this. Ms. Johnson, how do we get to court here today? Your Honor, I want to marry a man, not a boy. And I'm fed up with his irresponsible lies, his cheating, and his gambling. I'm done. I want out of this relationship. So you have walked in here with some very specific allegations. Mr. Hardaway, what do you say to those allegations? Your Honor, um, I want to save my relationship. Um, I love her. Uh, like you said, we have a two-year-old daughter together, and she needs both her parents and a household. We're, it's just a big misunderstanding, and that's why we're here today, to clear that up. So let's start off with some of the allegations. According to you, the defendant is an irresponsible liar. Make your case. My god brother's birthday, we, um, we decided to get him a U-Haul for two days. He was getting into his name and I was paying. Got it. Um, as far as I know, the U-Hauls were returned and everything was fine until I looked at my card details and I've seen that I've been charged over $200 for the U-Haul. Maybe you all is somewhere between 1999 and 39. Right, nine and a I'm day. still incurring charges after this U-Haul truck has been returned. So I asked Ben's about it, and he tells me he's going to handle it. I let it go. Three months later, I'm still incurring charges every month for this U-Haul. So I contact the company myself and find out he never returned the truck. What he did was he parked it in a shopping center down the street from the U-Haul company and left the keys under the chair. Mr. Hardaway. It's not my fault, Your Honor. Um, it is U-Haul's fault. Why is it U-Haul's fault? Well, like she said, I was supposed to drop it off. Um, her god brother, he brought the car back with no gas in it. Um, I was just starting a new job, and I had to be to work. So I drove it as far as I could get it. It cut off right around the corner from the U-Haul. I, I contacted them. I told them where it was at, told them where I was putting the keys at. They said that they would pick the vehicle up, everything would be handled. Who, who said that? Um, the actual, the supervisor at the U-Haul. And you have the man's uh, name? I don't have her name. Uh, oh, excuse me, that was presumptive, Judge Starr. <laughs> you have the person's name. I do not have her name. Let's say that's a Monday. Did you go back over there to see on Tuesday whether or not the U-Haul had been picked up? No, ma'am. Why not? The side of town that it was on, it was on the outskirts of the city. The responsible thing to do would have been to follow up, even I if did. you didn't go back over there to call U-Haul and say, do you all have the truck? I did contact them. They kept telling me that they picked the truck up. And who did you speak to? I just, I knew it was a, supposed to be a supervisor. Okay. I, I never Excuse wrote me, anybody's Honor, name. He's lying. Because when I spoke to the representative, they haven't heard anything from him since the incident, since he left it there. They hadn't heard any, they didn't even have acknowledgement that it was there. They found it there on their own. Mr. Hardaway, you put your girlfriend in a trick bag. That's the only way, but way I can describe it. How yeah. are you planning on dealing with that? Well, I really, honestly, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying. I'm work. I'm 
taking care of everything. He like, claimed he was gonna pay the money back, but I have a whole another incident to- I'm to listening, go ahead. How he's an irresponsible liar. So we, we started a job together at a hotel and we caught a cab to work together that morning. I get out the car to go use the restroom. He said he was paying. After, shortly thereafter, we're in our orientation, we're eating breakfast, and I see the cab driver come back into the hotel. He's at the front desk talking to the manager, and I overhear him tell her that he's been paid counterfeit money, he's called the police. Next thing I know, the police comes in, we're searched in front of everybody, and I'm fired before yeah, I can yeah. even start she, the job. She never got because fired. Because... You're not allowed to have police coming up to the company. Well, I can imagine uh, that. I'm not going to hire you, you at my company when you had the cops coming on your orientation. He claims that, she never, that, that she never he got, got the money from a They didn't a know it was her. Store. They said it was me. I got sent home that day. They told me not to come back until I got it cleared up. They sent up. both of us home. He claimed that when he got his cash back at a store, a grocery store, that they gave him the counterfeit money. They made me go to that grocery store and get documentation on a letterhead from them stating that I did come there. They did actually give me the counterfeit $100 bill. And did you prove it? Yes. Got it on letterhead, and I sent it to the job. The lady just told me, she said, well, she's glad that I got that cleared up, back. but she couldn't hire me back. No, Next. what had happened was he made the letter himself. Did I, you do I, that? I, no. I would have been brought up on charges. They, if, I would actually be charged with the counterfeit money and everything if I was not able to he, he does have proof of, of that. What makes you think he made he faked the letter? I'm just curious. <laughs> From past uh, other things that he's done that's shady, like the counterfeit money that I feel like that he, he purposely gave to them. Who gives a cab driver counterfeit money in the broad daylight when you getting dropped off at your job. Who does that? Sometimes he steals from my job. I almost got fired. I'd love to know the explanation for this one. Went through self-checkout. Two of the items didn't scan. You must be the unluckiest person on the planet because your U-Haul is returned with no gas. You happen to get fake money from the ATM and the scanner don't work at the Walmart. I, it was an unlucky day. So you clearly, Ms. Johnson, don't trust him. You've done the U-Haul, you've done the fake money. What else you got? So I'm working at Walmart while I'm pregnant, and he comes up to my job, he checks on me, he eats lunch with me and everything, but um, sometimes he steals from my job. What do you mean he steals He's from He's stealing job? out of Walmart, and they caught it on camera. Yeah, they, they had a little investigation they were doing. While she they was sick. They caught him on camera. And that was really I got a write up. I back and paid for. I got a write up because of that. I almost got fired because of that. They they thought that I was allowing him to steal at my job or that I was helping him or that you know my trustworthiness was under question because he's coming up to my job making it known that he's my child's father and he's stealing out of my job. So, Mr. Hardaway, I'd love to know the explanation for this one. Well, at the time she was pregnant like she said, um, this particular day she called me told me she wasn't feeling well. So I made it there. She told me some items to grab for her. I went to grab those, went through self-checkout. Two of the items didn't scan. Whenever I found that out, I had the money to pay for it. I was working. She had just started that job. Well, why so did I'm you pay So I'm taking money? care of he, 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 he our household as well as her, and I just stealing. wanted to make sure that stealing she was stuff. okay. You must be the unluckiest person on the planet because your U-Haul is returned with no gas. You happen to get fake money from the ATM, and the scanner don't work at the Walmart. Well, I, I am unlucky, Your Honor. Well, clearly. I'm like, sometimes I'm lucky, sometimes I'm not. I guess. Which right actually now, brings me to the next thing that's in yes, my case honor. file. Miss Johnson, you say that he is a gambler. Yes, he has a gambling problem. So one day. We're taking our daughter to the park, and we decide to stop and, and grab her some chicken nuggets and stuff or whatever. This place is literally across the street from where we grab the food. So he's like, oh, I'm gonna run here for a few minutes to see what, come, what I, um, if, you know what I'm saying, what I can get, and I'll be back. So I'm, I'm cool with it. We're, by the time we finish eating, he should be outside. When he finally comes outside, five hours later, he done lost $1,000. That's our, part of our rent money, light bill money, the child care for the week and everything. And Two hours tops, Your Honor. Two hours tops. I did lose money. Five hours. I did lose some money. I don't care if it's two hours or five hours. Left you lost me and the baby in the car. He just lost it quicker. Your Honor. In the car. And lost $1,000. We're not arguing over whether or not you left them out there. We know you did that. If well, it's two hours or it's five hours, but you lost $1,000. I lost $1,000, Your Honor. I w I w it was an unlucky day. 
Just sometime I'm up, sometime I'm down. She said, I don't know where to leave. He's feeding that machine money and tapping, tapping, tapping until all the money go in his pocket and he's trying to get it back and he dig himself. You know, well, I was lucky enough Mr. To... Hardaway is just unlucky. I'm no. telling you. I, well, I was lucky enough to buy a car from the lucky Gambit. Up on me. I'm like, hey, my cousin told me hey, I got a vehicle, $1,200. You can buy it. I give you a week. You don't buy it, I'm selling it to somebody else. Two days after he told me that, I had the $1,200. Why? I went to gamble. If Excuse I get Excuse me. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. I bought a yes, car. Nobody cares. <laughs> okay? Honor. You heard me say a broke clock is right twice a day. Okay? Well, we know more, this. Well, it was more so I'm twice. glad for you that you got that $1,200 from your $20. But that can't be your claim to fame. It makes no sense. You're a grown man. I'm looking at your age here, and you trying to brag about something that an 18-year-old brags about. Please, stop. Don't, don't, no, no. You doing this? I need you to do this right now. Ma'am? I went through his phone, and I seen some messages. Thank you, Daddy. I'm about to just say F of yeah, both. But I did bring her here, so that way she could tell you that we are just friends. Will you state your name for me? I'm um, Sarah Smith. Tell me the nature of your relationship with Mr. Hardaway. Me and him are friends with benefits. Something tells me that the benefits are not a 401k. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. My other issue, Your Honor, is cheating. Um, he's been cheating with a child's mother from the daycare that he's work he was working at. Um, <laughs> Daddy Daycare, this is a whole new TV show. I went through his phone and I seen some messages, stuff like good night and I love you, babe, and stuff like that. No, no, that. no, 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 it can't be I love you, babe. I love you, babe, I have evidence. I submitted it to the court. Um, Let's go to the videotape. You know you're the first guy to work with my dad and to meet my grandpa, so... They're gonna eat that, and I imagine, expletive up. I got you. Love you, bae. I'm about to take a shower. Oh. And the response is, yeah, me too. I love you too. Good night. If you end up going to sleep after. Okay. So, Mr. Hardway, are you having an inappropriate relationship with this woman or not? No, nothing happened. We're just friends. I might talk and say things that I probably shouldn't say. That's but... called being in an inappropriate relationship well, with Or somebody. just leading her on. You think it's uh, indicative of a good man to lead a woman to believe that there might be something there when it's not? No, but if it's a possibility that it could be. Yeah, like the girl you got calling your daddy. I see that they're friends on Facebook and they have messages going on and she's calling him daddy, he's talking about me to her and how he's unhappy in the relationship. And this is all in a, a message or a text? Yeah, I, I submitted evidence to the court. Ooh, she has the receipts up in this piece. Oh, okay, just checking on you. Thank you, Daddy. I'm gonna be okay. W-Y-D, I've learned. What you, what doing? you doing? I've learned that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be hip in a minute. Mm -hmm. His response, dealing with my baby mama and the girl I was dating. So we're basically trying to juggle a couple of situations. It's just becoming too much for me and I'm about to just say F for yeah, both. I don't know why, she call, why she's calling me Daddy. But I did bring her here so that way she could tell you that we are just friends. I, I can't explain the daddy. No, 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 no. You not honest to goodness. I, I really want to speak to the young lady, but I also would love to address. I'm about to just say f them both. That is the line of the day. Let's go to the witness, Robert. Let's ask Miss Smith to join us. So we already know for a fact that you have competition with somebody. Now it's Because you just put that in your text message. Dude, you got a lot better than that because you just got caught. Mm-hmm. Hello, ma'am. Hi, how are you? It's a pleasure to have you. Will you state your name for me? I'm um, Sarah Smith. Nice to meet you, Miss nice Smith. Nice to meet you, too. I'm glad that you're here because we have just exposed Mr. Hardaway on having a relationship with someone. Is this you that is having this conversation in the text message, ma'am? Um, 
Yes. Tell me the nature of your relationship with Mr. Um, Hardaway. The nature of our relationship, Your Honor, um, I did not come here to fly down here to play games. Um, me and him are friends with benefits. Um, we text, we have our text messages here and there. He comes to uh, see me. He played with my kids before, all that. You said friends with benefits. Yes. Something tells me that the benefits are not a 401k. <laughs> no. Bomba. Miss Smith, have you had an intimate relationship with Mr. Hardaway? Um, we had or I had um, did oral sex on him before. So there's no question in your mind that he has led you to believe that at least there's something there. Um, yes, he has. Um, he, we, when we chill and stuff, he, one time but to, um, down the line, he done said, eventually we'll be in a relationship. When so the you last... knowingly had this relationship going on with him when he had a, a family? Uh, like, what type of female are you? What type of women are you? <laughs> Us, as, as black women in the first place. For it, one, for what, one. What was, what did... For one, he said that y'all was, he trying to get out of that situation. Only reason he's sticking around is because his kids. Thank you. And he said, and another situation here is he um, trying to live um, his um, living situation. So he don't know where he's going to go after that. But he can definitely come this way. Oh. Miss well, Smith? I'm over it anyway, so you can have him. Miss Smith, I just want to be real clear about this. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Hardaway has led you to believe that there is a future. Yes. When's the last time that you all had an intimate encounter? Um, it's been about a few weeks now. A few weeks? Yes. Mr. Hardaway? I'm not cheating. But, like, but, but okay, so do we, do we oh, really want to ask the real deal questions? So in other words, like duck, you got, like a... uh, or you received oral no. sex, but you don't I, consider no. that to be... I, that no, What is that? What no. is that? It's sex, right? No. I want to be very clear that you are saying that Miss Smith is lying, that she did yeah, not... She's never performed oral sex on me. Oh. Why are you lying? She's now, saying... the most I, I have, I did give her a kiss. It wasn't a couple a weeks ago. A kiss? Um, that's the most that I've done, besides flirt. So why would this woman fly... Well, she just told her, well, you don't want him, he can slide over this way. So you're saying that it's okay? That's what you're saying, that all of this is okay because she's No, said, but I'm just saying... Yeah, if, I mean, I'm this saying don't work she's, out, she's she'll gonna... wait much. Well... I'm... I figured it out for you, Miss Johnson. See, Mr. Hardaway is enjoying the attention yeah. of multiple women. He is a disrespectful man who does not care about you or any other woman, Miss Smith. I just want to let you know. And I know that everybody wants to have somebody in their lives, but the last thing you need to want to have in your life is a man that does not respect you. Amen to that. Okay? I do respect you. Excuse it. me, sir. This Clear. is my house, not yours. And I need to let you know something. The fact that you would say, I'm about to say F them both, tells me that whoever the daycare lady is, I wish I had her number so that I could bring her in here to let her know. Ms. Johnson, mm -hmm. I hope to God that you do not bring this back in your house in front of your two-year-old child because you are teaching her that this is what a woman should accept, and you should not accept that. You a fabulous young lady, and this right here is a cheating dog. Get out of my room. Ooh. You sitting right there in front of everybody still lying, you, don't, you, you don't got all of that evidence. She told the truth. She didn't. She just flew all the way here. She didn't come all the way over she here just to lie. She just she told just left. you. She, she just, just told left. you after this, she if you're done the with him, then he can slide over there. I had message proof. You just said okay. she, she's waiting for you, so you go ahead and be with her. I'm going to take our daughter, and I'm going to go ahead about our, my business. Well, Robert? This is the unluckiest man in the world. Completely unlucky, but he also doesn't know how to not tell on himself. I don't think he realized until I pointed it out that he had confessed. He confessed to having two women mm -hmm. to the third woman. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Only on Divorce Court. <laughs>